Lancer's flagship Mobile One 12 hours of Sebring had the added bonus this year of the World Endurance Championship rolling into town, giving US fans an extra 1,000 mile race on the Friday and the chance to see motorsport royalty in action. It's going to be uh, an amazing weekend, uh, also with the WEC and the IMSA together uh, in the same place. Severin is just full, I think it's sold out completely, so that's uh, amazing to see all the fans, all the passion. I hope the weather stays dry and we see a good battle. It's great to be back here at Sebring, you know, it's always an event um, I love I love coming to. And the track itself, it's a huge challenge. To put a lap together is really rewarding. The show has been a lot of fun around here, we've been you know, edging down and down on the lap times and uh, yeah, it's been a lot of fun. The Sebring track is notoriously challenging, even with its own hashtag, respect the bumps, and the mixture of asphalt and concrete demands a car setup that can withstand the rigors of a day-night endurance race. With the Toyota Hybrid here at Sebring, we didn't have any big issues, the normal ones of the bumps, but uh, I think our car is quite sophisticated on the suspension side. Also, we have a lot of downforce that helps on the grip on the car, so I think we are struggling less than, than some others. Sebring is a challenge for everyone. Every single part of the car suffers more. Every driver, tires, gearbox, engine. It's a good place to investigate the strength of the car, definitely. The old airfield is a true racer's circuit with limited runoffs, tight corners, and the infamous unlit track creates a unique challenge once night falls. It's very difficult to pass through all the GT cars or P2 cars. And the race will be long and half in the night time. It's already a big challenge just to finish the race without any problem. It's going to be tricky. I like driving the night because of the laps you've done around this place. You know where everything is. It's just more for qualifying when you've got to just do one lap. You don't get any warm-up to do it. you just got to go. That's the hardest bit, but you get pretty dialed in. A very challenging track, challenging at night, challenging on traffic as well because there are some narrow sections uh, out there. So I think it's going to be a very difficult race and uh, hopefully a, a trouble free. The darkness didn't trouble two-time Formula One world champion Fernando Alonso, who set the fastest lap of all time at Sebring in qualifying in the Toyota LMP1 hybrid. An exciting moment of the weekend doing qualifying, especially because uh, you improve like four or five seconds from your previous lap in FP3 and then you go into qualifying, so you need to adjust a little bit your references at night plus the, the speed you get into qualifying. So it was great to put the lap together. You know, it's long race in front of us, but it's better to start at the front. The Stars and Stripes wave. We are racing for the thousand miles of Sebring, round six of the World Endurance Championship, and the hybrid powered Toyotas are jumping away from the field. The pair of Toyota hybrids bossed the race from the start. They'd finished 10 laps ahead of their closest prototype competition. In the inter-team battle, Alonso, Kazuki Nakajima and Sebastian Buemi wrestled control from the sister car. With heavy rain and standing water, the race finished under caution, with Nakajima bringing the number eight Toyota home for their third win of the WEC Super Season. I'm really happy to come back here with no damage on the car. And uh, yeah, the win is uh, like a bonus for us.